Physicists just invented a new type of particle accelerator using a micro nozzle. It accelerates protons like the LHC, but does over a distance of millimeters what takes a standard magnet based accelerator hundreds of meters. In the press release, the inventors say that the new method delivers excellent beam quality. Could this be the future of high energy physics? Let's have a look. For decades, building a proton collider meant increasingly larger rings of increasingly stronger magnets. It's worth the effort, we've been told. Probing short distances requires high energies, and particle colliders therefore are our best chance to find out what happens at short distances. Yet the increasingly huge size of these colliders has become economically unsustainable. CERN's plans for the next larger collider, the FCC, which would be more than 90 kilometers in circumference, are in the range of about $40 billion. One of the technologies that could shrink particle accelerators down is wake field acceleration. For this, one shoots with a laser at a gas. The laser displaces charges and creates a plasma that travels at high speed, pulling electrons behind it. This method has been used to successfully accelerate electrons up to about 5 giga electron volts or so over a distance of about 1 centimeter. That's still about a factor 1000 less in energy than what the LHC currently delivers, but it's promising. Unfortunately, wake field acceleration only works for electrons. Protons are just too heavy. This is where the new idea comes in, which they call micro nozzle acceleration. Acceleration. It works like this. Inside a vacuum chamber, you place a metallic funnel. That's the nozzle. It's just a few millimeters wide, and in their example, it's made of aluminium. Inside of it, you have a small rod with hydrogen, because you want to accelerate protons, and hydrogen nuclei are just protons. The rod could be frozen hydrogen or some other material that's saturated with hydrogen. Then you take a big laser, it must have a power of several petawatt, and shoot at the funnel. This rips electrons off the material of the nozzle. At the incoming side of the nozzle, this creates a lot of moving electrons inside of the nozzle. These hit the hydrogen rod and kick out protons. But at the outgoing side of the nozzle, this strips electrons off on the outer side. This means that the inner side is positively charged because of the the curve of the nozzle, this both focuses and accelerates the protons. This is really clever. Now I have to warn you that this was not an experiment, it was a computer simulation. But at least in this computer simulation, the protons reached almost a giga electron volt in energy. So that's still somewhat less than wake field acceleration reaches for electrons and it's a simulation rather than the real thing. But come on, this is a really cool idea. And they reached this acceleration just over a few millimeters, which coincidentally is just about the size of my enthusiasm for the $40 billion collider. But just like wake field acceleration, this method needs a multi petawatt laser and those are neither small nor cheap. They're typically 10 to 20 meters long. That's still much less than the LHC pre-accelerator, which brings protons up to 1 GV2, and that's about 100 meters in diameter. But you see, for this energy, the difference in size isn't all that dramatic. The big question is therefore whether and how these different methods, wake field and micro nozzles, could scale to a TV or beyond. And what about the excellent beam quality? Wakefield accelerated electron beams now routinely achieve a focus angle below one degree and energy spreads of only a few percent. In contrast, the simulated proton beam from the micron nozzle has an opening angle of about 16 degrees and an energy spread of roughly 50 percent. That's not what particle physicists will call excellent beam quality. The reason the authors say this, I believe, is that the micron nozzle idea is an entirely new New. There have been earlier attempts to accelerate protons by shooting with lasers at things, and this new method is excellent compared to those. Everything is relative. Why does this even matter? 
Proton beams have various applications. For one thing, they're being used for cancer treatments because their energy can be deposited in tissue in a more targeted way than X-rays. However, the size and cost of the required proton accelerators makes this therapy method impossible for broad applications. Proton beams can also be used to treat or probe materials. And of course, what we really want is particle accelerators that exceed the collision energy of the Large Hadron Collider to test the fundamental laws of nature, to find some anomalies to argue about, and to keep theoretical physicists away from Wall Street. The new curiosity box is here, and I'm super excited they've been sponsoring this video so I can tell you all about it. The curiosity box is a subscription for science lovers that delivers a selection of curiosity inspiring items to your door four times a year. The idea comes from Michael from Vsauce, who also himself invents some of these items, like the stainless steel chopsticks that also work as a slide rule, so you can do maths with them. My kids want me to learn how to cook Chinese now. And they do cover the classics too, like this month's box has a prism that, hey, it splits light, but you already knew this. Did you also know though that it works the other way around? If you look through the prism at this odd looking chameleon on this box, it'll recombine the colors. I had some trouble getting the camera to focus, but it's actually easier to see by eye. The new box also has this cool t-shirt that combines two optical illusions. And of course I have a special offer. If you use my link curiositybox.com slash Sabina and the code 25 Sabina, you'll save 25% off your first box. And if you sign up for the annual plan, you'll get the Denry dice set as a free gift. My entire family enjoys the curiosity box, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.